My name is John Dawson and uh, I'm going to be doing a series of videos on uh, how to do Prano prints. Uh, this is the second uh, video in the series and concerns um, the uh, materials that need to be heat set. And to begin with, we'll go through the materials that need to be heat set and then uh, go on to uh, how uh, to do the actual heat setting of uh, the Prano plates. Uh, there are only a few things that absolutely have to be heat set. Uh, the most important one, I believe, would be uh, the copy toner. Uh, this is a kind of a black powder that they use in um, uh, laser printers. Uh, I got this on the internet. It's not very expensive. You, um, you just have to search around on the internet to find it. Uh, one important thing is uh, um, you should not breathe in uh, this uh, black powder. It's, uh, it's not good for you. And uh, they usually come with a little applicator like this that you can use to squirt the, uh, the uh, copy toner into a jar. Uh, you put it into a jar, and then um, the way you use it is uh, put it into a jar and then add a, a little bit of alcohol and stir it up. That makes one kind of solution. Another is to uh, put it into a jar with water. Uh, a third option is to uh, put it in the jar with some water and uh, some dish soap. Then a couple other poss possibilities to use. One is, um, I mentioned uh, in an earlier video, uh, a pilot pen. This is a, you know, like an ink pen that is not an, a, a ballpoint pen. Um, these can be obtained, uh, you know, at uh, any uh, office supply store. I've had very mixed results with this. I've had uh, it uh, work real well and then not work at all. To work at all, it has to be heat set, but actually a much better um, option is to go with a, um, this is a Sharpie fine point. And I believe uh, you'd have to go to an art supply store to find this. It works very well, but it absolutely has to be heat set. And then what you're going to need is uh, some mineral spirits. The mineral spirits, uh, I guess, help uh, adhere the um, uh, toner to the plate before you heat set it. And then the final thing you're going to have to have is an eyedropper. And we're going to use this to apply the um, uh, mineral spirits to the plate. Now, um, as far as the mineral spirits are concerned, you absolutely have to have real mineral spirits. Um, paint thinner won't work. Sometimes paint thinner says on the can uh, partial minerals, mineral spirits or something to that effect. Uh, paint thinner won't work. It has to be regular mineral spirits. And you don't need a lot of it, so a small can will, will be uh, sufficient. I have the uh, two different mixtures here of the um, copy toner, one with uh, alcohol and uh, one with water. This uh, first test plate is the one with alcohol. And uh, this part of the test plate is the uh, one I've uh, mixed up with water. One thing to kind of look out for, if the uh, tonal mixture mixed with water isn't thoroughly mixed and dissolved, it may go on in a kind of a crusty uh, manner and if it does it's likely to uh, lift off uh, during the printing process. You can see that in these details and the first one is before uh, the printing and in the second one is uh, after it's uh, been printed a few times and you can see a large area of it is lifted off in the printing process. I put a little bit of um, mineral spirits in a can and I'm applying it to the test plate with uh, an eyedropper. Um, this is probably going to run a little bit more than it normally would because of the angle I have the uh, test plate at in order to uh, show it on the video. And uh, then you need to, uh, to let it dry. It doesn't take very long because the uh, mineral spirits evaporate pretty quickly. Even after it's uh, dry, um, you can see that it's still kind of in powder form uh, by the way that it has smeared uh, with my finger. 
Now the uh, test plate has been heat set on a hot plate at um, about 200 to 250 degrees for around 20 minutes and as you can see it no longer smears. If some of the powder comes off on your finger it hasn't been heat set long enough and should be uh, done over. And uh, this is how the test plate looks uh, after it's been printed. A, another possibility for a copy toner solution is to put uh, some of the copy toner into a jar, add some water, and then add uh, dish soap to that. I read about this particular uh, copy tone solution on uh, the internet, and as you'll see, there are a few problems with it. Uh, when you apply it to the plate, if it puddles up at all, um, those areas will uh, wipe off when you sponge the plate to print it. One way to uh, solve that is to uh, blot up those puddled areas and then uh, lightly reapply uh, the toner again so that you don't have uh, puddled areas. And then uh, we have to apply the uh, mineral spirits once again before um, we do the actual heat setting. Uh, this is the uh, test plate before it's printed and the areas circled in red are areas where the um, soap and uh, toner mixture uh, puddled up. I guess because of the concentration of soap in the uh, solution those puddled areas are just going to uh, wash off when uh, I sponge the plate. This is the print from the test plate and as you can see those uh, areas circled in red are where the puddled areas were on uh, the Prano plate. They've washed away and now they're just uh, white uh, blobs instead of uh, being uh, dark printed areas. However, I, I do think uh, the uh, tonal areas came out a little better with this solution than some of the others. I may have had a little too much soap in the solution which might have caused the problem. Uh, I do think this is uh, one that is worth trying if you can overcome some of the problems. Well, the way I understand it is uh, some materials need to be heat set uh, so they'll be uh, properly fused to the, uh, to the plate. Uh, without it, um, they won't uh, print properly or maybe they won't print at all. Um, some, uh, some time ago I saw uh, a video on um, on YouTube about uh, a particular etching ground that had to be put into a, an oven and the uh, the person doing the video put it into what looked like a pizza oven. So uh, who the hell has a pizza oven in their, <laughs> in their studio? Um, if I tried to put uh, etching plates in our kitchen oven, uh, my wife Shirley would kill me. Anyway, uh, having said that, um, for most people, the, probably the easiest and best way is to put the plate in your uh, kitchen oven at uh, 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, my primary experience is with uh, etchings, and I have a, a professional etching hot plate, uh, of which I use to, uh, to do the uh, heat setting process. And that's pretty simple. Um, you just uh, put the, uh, the plate on the, on the hot plate, you turn it to about 200 to 250 degrees and then I use a, um, a cookie sheet to place on top of it uh, and um, once again uh, it takes about 20 minutes at about 250 degrees. The other way to um, heat set uh, a Prano plate is you can use a, a Black & De Decker heat gun. It looks kind of like a hair dryer, and uh, it takes much longer, and um, I've never actually done it, but I understand that'll work. And possibly a hair dryer will work, but I think it would take a long time to do it, and I'm not sure that a hair dryer would ever get really hot enough to, um, to uh, fuse the uh, materials to the plate. I had thought it might be possible here in Arizona to just put it out in the sun. Uh, we do a thing here called uh, sun tea, 
where we put uh, tea bags in a jar of water and set it out in the sun and it gets hot enough to brew the tea. But I tried it and it, it didn't work. So anyway, the, um, the best, uh, uh, probably the best way to uh, heat set um, a, uh, a prana plate for most people is with kitchen oven. You could also try to make a, uh, your own hot plate by using a, a, a hot plate that you normally use to cook food on. And uh, you'd need a, uh, a metal sheet like a, a zinc plate or a copper plate. The problem with that is there's uh, no good way to, um, to uh, regulate the heat. And you could easily damage the plate. So um, those are the main methods for uh, heat setting uh, prano plates. And this is a more practical application of the... Um, uh, tonal solutions uh, applied to uh, an actual work in progress. Well, those are the materials that uh, absolutely have to be heat set in order to uh, to print. Um, I don't know how true it is. Uh, the conventional wisdom seems to be that um, if you're going to do an addition of 10 or more, that even those materials that uh, don't need to be heat set in order to print should be heat set. Um, supposedly the, uh, the plate will begin to break down if uh, everything is in heat set with additions that are larger than 10 or 12. So um, to be on the safe side, it's probably the wisest thing to do is to heat set everything. Uh, I'm going to follow this up with some examples of my own prints and the web address for my website and Facebook page. And if you're interested, uh, you can um, subscribe to other instructional videos of mine on YouTube.